So uh, today is Pentecost, and that has set me thinking about, well, uh, I feel like all my sermons start with whatever book I happen to be reading. But I've been reading a book called um, Christianity After Religion, and she talks about uh, folks who are spiritual but not religious as part of her conversation. And so I've been thinking since it's Pentecost, which is um, sort of the spirituality, the Holy Spirit's big day, that I've been thinking about this word spiritual and um, thinking about what kind of church, um, first of all, what kind of church got started at Pentecost, and then what kind of church is God calling us up here and also sort of us more generally as Christians in the world in the United States um, to become. And maybe we won't decide right now what all of America's Christians should be like, but um, that's the kind of thing I think about on a daily basis and probably more, I should probably not overthink it. Uh, but anyway, so what kind of church? So thinking about the reading that we read today about Pentecost, uh, the thing that stood out to me uh, was that the spirit, a little bit like these flowers here, um, is somewhat contained, but somewhat just like nobody's expecting it. You know, is like um, in the story, uh, on the one hand, there's a tremendous gift people receive, right? That they are speaking to people in their home language. I feel like there's something important there about that, that uh, the folks who are in Jerusalem, for the most part, are going to be able to speak Hebrew or Greek or something so they can communicate with each other. But it's one thing to, um, if you speak another language, it's one thing to figure out directions to the bathroom in German, right? And it's another thing to really have someone like read poetry to you or um, tell you that they love you in your home language, in the one that you grew up with. So. So there's that. So there's that piece of the Holy Spirit coming to the people in the church that is about reaching people in their own language, speaking to them in their own language. Um, and then there's a piece of it that um, maybe isn't so obvious, but um, there's not a lot of uh, the, the, the we call it, sometimes we call Pentecost the birthday of the church, right? You guys have heard that. It's the birthday of the church. Um, but it's not like uh, the charter got signed, right? It's not like uh, a piece of paper was um, handed out and all the documents were in place. Um, there's, I suppose you could call that like a birth certificate, right? We didn't have a birth certificate signed. We just had a birth. And that birth of the church, um, perhaps like the birth of humans, is a tremendous and overwhelming and beautiful, um, but not something that, well, I suppose there's paperwork involved. But you do that later. Right? That makes sense. You do the paperwork later. And so I think that it's important to remember that. That what the church is about is about the spirit and not about um, the organizing principles. Although those are important, but they're not the key thing. So <clears throat> that brings me to this idea of what is spiritual. So let's go to the next slide. So this is from the book, uh, Christianity After Religion, and the author, Diana Butler Bass, goes and she speaks to groups kind of on a regular basis. That's her job. And um, she's asked many different groups across the country, mostly church people, mostly kind of mainline church people, what do you think of when you hear spirituality or when you hear somebody say I'm spiritual but not religious? What do you hear, what do you see, what do you think of? Um, and these are those qualities. Uh, experience, connection, transcendence, searching, intuition, prayer, meditation, nature, energy, open, wisdom, inner life, 12 steps, inclusive, and doubt. <clears throat> and I didn't, I already returned the book to the library, so I don't have a list for religion. Uh, but it was kind of a line of order and um, staying organized and um, structure and dogma and doctrine. <clears throat> now I'm not saying that that is like necessarily what I think of when I think of spirituality or when I think of religion, um, but I do feel like the idea of an institutional religion is in, at its best supports spirituality. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. That it's not there just 
for its own sake. Um, and we at 6 8, our three core values, is one of them is spirituality. And I don't know if this is the perfect definition we would want to adopt as what we mean by spirituality, but there's a lot in there. Um, I think, you know, prayer and meditation, for example. Um, I see a lot of ways that our service relates to nature, um, that we are trying to be in a place of connection and of searching. Um, I thought the 12 steps was interesting, just as a side note. Um, that, that is a whole thing to unpack on its own, right? But this idea of maybe what is spiritual, maybe what people are concerned about is um, maybe one of the struggles that we face today is more about our addictions than it is about um, sin. Does that make any sense? That we can get caught in cycles that are hard to get out of. But it's not exactly addiction. I'm not addicted to books. I promise. <laughs> I can quit any time. I can quit any time. <laughs> but not, a, well, okay, so maybe it's addiction. But that addiction might be a better description of what the spiritual struggles are today than they were 500 years ago. Does that make sense? So, um, so this is a list of, so this is sort of the description of spirituality. So, um, I guess all I'm trying to say is, I think and I hope that this is the direction that God is calling this church and possibly the whole church to be about supporting spirituality. That the Holy Spirit is moving now and in our time and in our place in this direction. And possibly always was moving in this direction, right? Always was calling us to prayer. Always was calling us to wisdom. Um, but to say, what brings us together? What is our spirituality? Um, it's about, uh, you know, uh, what am I trying to get at here? That what, we're, what we support, what we care about in terms of spirituality is these things. It's something along these lines of being open, of um, seeking experiences of God. I guess that wasn't always the case. I think maybe 200 years ago, people wanted to know about God, like wanted to know all the facts about God, how God works. Does that make sense? And for me, personally, that's not quite as important as do I know God, right? Uh, so um, the thing that I noticed, though, about a sermon like this saying, hey, we should do this stuff, is that it's not quite the same as actually experiencing God. So I apologize for that. But um, hopefully the music is good. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I just, I'll just say this. I feel like um, I want us to come together to experience God. But everybody experiences God in different ways. And so some of us experience God through the people that we meet and we talk to them. Or we do service and we experience God, right? Um, for me, definitely the music is a big, is a big piece of it. Um, oh, I'm getting choked up. But all of us, I mean, we have our own path to God, but at the same time, um, you know, I need a community to help me come back to it and not, not let it go because it is hard, right? It's not always easy. Um, and it's not always easy to have courage and to have discipline. Um, and so maybe that's the religion part, is that I'm hoping and praying that we can be, be both spiritual and religious that we can be tied to one another and tied to God. So the good news, the thing that I see there, is that God is doing this stuff in people's lives, whether or not they choose to be religious. Right. So we can give thanks for that. And uh, we can give thanks for the ways that God is letting us live with doubt and letting us continue to search and letting us have experiences of God and the beauty of nature. Um, all these things are gifts from God in different ways. And also to say that this space is a gift from God and to give thanks for the way that the Holy Spirit has at work. So, um, I wish I had a kind of a closing story. I have a closing story. So, <laughs> this is a different book that I read this week. This is a different book that I read this week. It's another book. It's another book. I'm not. I can quit anytime. 
Um, so this is a woman who is um, kind of an evangelical type lady, and she lives down in Austin, Texas. And um, was her husband was a pastor in mega church, and then she read the Irresistible Revolution that we read recently, and she said it completely messed her life up. And so they moved, they changed jobs, they started a little church, and they're really working at um, serving the poor and actually doing the things Jesus says instead of just talking about them and um, buying giant new buildings. And um, she spent seven months doing seven different spiritual practices. And at the end of those spiritual practices, like cutting down on waste, growing her own food, limiting her stress, observing the Sabbath. She, um, at the end of all of those, she did all this stuff, and at the end, she had a time when she was going to fast for some friends and pray for them. And she said at the end of it, doing the fast was like a normal thing. It was like nothing. And she, not nothing, it was still a fast. But she was used to and had developed the discipline to be able to do these things uh, by focusing on them over a long time. And so my belief, my hope is that we as a community, by practicing religion, by being together, um, learn together how to pray, how to meditate, how to be present to God, because we are together, um, and because we're helping each other. And so that, while it takes a while, um, as we grow together, uh, this life of faith gets easier, uh, maybe not easier, but we can go deeper with it, and we can um, we can build that faith together, and we can um, be stronger and more connected to God in the work that we do. So let's have a prayer. Loving God, let your Spirit dwell among us. Help us to deepen our connection to you, and help us to focus on your Spirit and to let go of the structure that we don't need and keep the structure that we do. Bless us with your spirit. Help us to find you in the ways that each of us find you and to do the things that you call us to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let's have some time for reflection, and then we will have some community conversations.